Firstly, I'd like to express my profound gratitude to Pastor, my father. Um, I'm a product of the ministry of the man of God, Pastor Chris. Um, it's been over half, um, a quarter of a decade since I encountered Pastor, and it's just been from glory to glory. I love you so much, sir. I love you so much, so much. I, I want to say a big thank you to all our esteemed CC members. Thank you so very much for the investment of your personality in my life. Each of you have impacted me in a great, great, great way. Thank you so much, sir. I'd like to express my profound gratitude to the CEO of our great nation. Thank you so very much, Ma, for this opportunity. And also a big thank you to the IBPC chairman, Mr. Joy Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I've been wondering too for, for some days. But I don't have a message. I am a message. I'm a message. I believe that Pastor sent me today as a message to you. That all the things you've been hearing the Spirit of God say to you is really true. Because if I'm here today, it means that those incredible things that the Spirit of God has been speaking to you, those things are true. Those things are true. And today you are stepping in. Today you are stepping in. That is the message. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity. Thank you for the power and the efficacy of your word. Our hearts and our minds are open to receive your word in faith, in meekness, with great joy and excitement. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Psalm 40. Psalm 40, verse 7. Stepping into prophecies. In the book Prophecy, The Power That Controls Your Future, the man of God defined prophecy as the spoken word of God. The spoken word of God. The revealed word of God by which he leads, he guides his people. That means the word of prophecy is the spoken word of God by which he leads and guides his people. The man who prophesies speaks with the ability of God's Spirit. So we see that prophecy is the spoken word of God that is spoken by the ability of the Holy Ghost. And from Monday up until last night, we've been receiving words of prophecy. We've been receiving those words. But the word of prophecy is like a script. And you do something with a script. You don't admire a script. When a script is given to you, you don't look at it and admire it. You don't look at it and just gain knowledge. A script is a description of a picture. A picture of what you become. A script is for doing. A script tells you your role, it tells you your position, it tells you your place. So when the word of God comes to us, God's word is scripture. God's word is scripture. That means it's a script. It shows you who you are. And there's only one response to God's word. God's word doesn't just bring information to you. God's word shows you a picture of your role. And just like an actor, what you need to do is get into the role. Get into the role. Now, when you have a production house, uh, you know, you have different kinds of production house. You have independent producers that try to... Um, come up with a movie. And sometimes when you're an independent producer, you do everything. You write the script, you direct it, and you do all that. But sometimes you have a big production house. When you have a big production house, and you're an actor, and you are given a script, and the script says that you are rich, you have no business looking for the car to make you rich. If you're starting out, the script says you're rich, then you go meet your friend and say, please, can I borrow your car? You go meet someone and say, can I have your house? When you have a big production house, they set up everything for you. Your responsibility is to enter into the role. 
That's your responsibility. To get into the role. And brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is not Nollywood. The kingdom of God is not Hollywood. The kingdom of God is not Bollywood. The kingdom of God, when God gives you that script, I want to tell you something that the production is set. Your part, your part is to know the role. Your part is to understand what the script says. Because the producer has gone to work. When that script says I'm rich, I have to understand that the producer has already created everything. The Bible says that we are walking in parts that have been predestined. The man of God says that our path is as a shining light. He says everything that we need is in that path. All we need to do is to stay in the path. All we need to do is to stay in the path of the prophecy that has been spoken. Jesus said in the volume of the book is being written about me. Let, let's read that scripture. Um, Psalm 40 verse 7. He says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. There's a book with your name on it. There's a story with your name on it. Pastor told us yesterday that we are epistles. We are epistles. Paul writing to the church says you are the epistles of Christ. Yet Paul was the one writing. Paul was a master script writer. Writing on the church. He came to the church and he told them. He said when I came to you. I made up my mind not to know anything about you. Save Christ and him crucified. That means Paul said when I came and I looked at you. I didn't see your poverty. When I came I looked at you. I didn't see your lack. All I saw was Christ and him crucified. That means Christ, his crucifixion, and the repercussions of those crucif crucifixions. That means what are the benefits that came from the crucifixion of Christ? When I look at you, I see the product of God's word. Paul said, I made up my mind to look at you that way. Today, Paul said that to the Ephesian church. But praise God. Today we have the man of God, Pastor Chris. No wonder when he comes, he speaks to you like, like the word of God describes you. You know, you may, have been, you may have been here and you're hearing the, the word of the man of God speaking to you and you're wondering, Pastor, this picture, this story is not my current story. You need to understand that the man of God came with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He came with the power of the Spirit of God to write a new story. To write a new story. And all you need to do is to accept the story. Jesus said, in the volume of the book, it is written about me. I've come to fulfill your will, O oh God. We read in the scriptures about Mary. She was, she didn't have an expectation. I mean, Mary didn't come up that day and say to herself, things to do. Number one, get pregnant. Number two, become the one who initiates the, 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 the son of God into, into the world. He didn't, she didn't have those goals. But an angel stepped in. Just like you didn't have some goals. You may be here, you didn't say, one of my goals is to be a millionaire. But the Spirit of God has stepped in. Maybe you look at your background. You didn't set a goal to say to yourself that you will be a millionaire in dollars. But the Spirit of God has stepped in. You never thought to yourself that you were going to take that nation. But the Spirit of God has stepped in. And today there's an angel that has come. The angel, the angel of the word of God. The messenger, the one who carries that word. Just like Gabriel, the man of God has come with a word for you. And he says to you, you are highly favored. He says to you, amongst others, you are, you are, you are highly favored, you are special. He tells you that you have a purpose. What do you do? You react like Mary. Mary said, be it unto me. Makata barakaya. She said, be it unto me. When she said, be it unto me, I told you, the word of God is not for knowledge. The word of God is not for analysis. The word of God is for you to step in. Mary said, be it unto me, according to your script. Be it unto me, according to your word. And you know what? The angel said, just in case you're wondering how this is going to happen. He said, the power of the highest. The power of the highest. It will come upon you. Brothers and sisters, we have something even much better. This power of the highest is not just coming upon you. 
This power of the highest lives within in you. This power of the highest resides within you. No wonder the scripture says, this is the mystery that has been hid from generations past, from ages past. It says this mystery is Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. The earnest expectation for something greater. That word of prophecy will step into it. Ten in one. Our year of the supernatural. I am a message. A message of the Spirit of God. Being written by the man of God. And displayed to the whole world. Display to the whole world. Not just to my city, display to the whole world. No wonder my partnership cannot remain the same. My partnership has to go to the next level. Why? Because I'm a message. I have a voice. I have a voice. Mary stepped into it. She said, be it unto me according to your word. According to your word. We look through the scriptures and we see another example. We see the example of Saul. Saul didn't have any ambition. In fact, the Bible says that he was so timid, he was so shy. He went just any other day, an ordinary day, in search of something that had gotten missing. Saul was in deficit until he met the prophet. And the prophet said to him, when you leave me today, brothers and sisters, when we leave the IPPC, I said, when we leave the IPPC, the word of the man of God will produce favor. I said, it will produce favor. Saul had never had someone give him something. But Samuel said, when you leave me, he said, you will see a company. A company of prophets. He says, they will give you something. One will give you bread. Another will give you oil. Brothers and sisters, something is going to happen. Listen, listen. The man of God said, he said, I put favor on you. That means that favor is on us. I didn't say the favor is coming. The favor is here. I carry that favor. It's causing people to bring things to me. It's, I said, it's causing people to bring things to me. I said, it's causing people to bring things to me. Gold, silver, dollars, pounds, lands. Samuel said to, to, to Saul, he said, when you see them, you join themselves. You join yourself to them. Then he told him something significant. Can we see this? First Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. They are prophesying. You prophesy with them. We have in the same spirit of faith, as it is written, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. If the man of God believes the word and speaks the word to me, I have a responsibility to take that word into my spirit and say the same thing in consonance. I agree with the word. Humility is accepting what God says. Pride is resisting God's word. Pride is raising your opinion above God's opinion. So the word of God says that this is a church. This is a house. The house of David. This house is getting stronger and stronger. Brothers and sisters, we are getting stronger and stronger. This message is taking over. So I accept it. The words of prophecy that the man of God declared has to be in my mouth. I say the same thing. Then look at it. It says, verse 6 again. It says, and thou, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Now, it, it says you prophesy and you shall be turned. He didn't say you will feel anything. He said you shall be turned. You prophesy with them, you shall be turned into another man. Then look at verse 7. Verse 7 says something. It says, and let it be when these signs are come unto thee. For, 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 for the Old Testament folk, they will look on the outside for the sign. For the New Testament folk, there's a sign inside. I said there's a sign inside. There's a staring up inside. 
You know, sometimes when you, 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 you want to receive some messages and you don't want people to know that you're receiving those messages, you can put your phone on vibration. Some other time you put your phone on silence. Nobody's hearing but you know. I said nobody's hearing but you know. There's no melody but you know. There's nothing on the outside but you know. Things may not have changed in your bank account but you know. Because there is something inside. Something inside. He says you will know. That, let's see something here. Let's see something here. He says when this happens. When you know like we know. He says do as occasion serves you. Do as step into it. Step into it. It's not coming, it's here. It's now. This is the day of the shouting church. This is the day of the victorious church. This is the day of the triumphant church. We are not the ones that hide. No wonder when the Holy Ghost takes over. When there's a staring, the limitations and the barriers, they are removed. We see the final, the final example in the scriptures. We see the example of Jesus himself in Luke chapter 4. The word of God is producing great results. We have taken over. This gospel is marching on. My partnership has escalated. It's a new level. Grace abounds. Grace abounds. I've been transported. I've been transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's working, it's working, it's working. It's working. It's working. Oh, it's working. Praise God. Praise God. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Jesus came into the temple. He came into the synagogue. And he took the script. Then he says this. He, he looked for a place. He looked for his role. He looked for his role. In life there are different roles. I didn't come to walk by. We've been called to give, to, to play a major role. Look at the prophecies that God has given to us as a ministry. The man of God told us. He told us that God, God told him. He said, I have given you the whole world. When you hear that prophecy, you don't admire it. Then say, oh wow, Pastor Chris. Oh, no. You are in his bosom. When the man of God says that God has given the whole world, you think to yourself and say, that is God's word to me. Then you step into it. If you're a businessman, that means no local transactions. You're telling yourself, we may start local, but we have an international mindset. We may be here today, but we've come to take over. Why? Because that business is connected to the altar. Jesus chose his place. He said in verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sights to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now you observe this then in, in verse, verse 20. Jesus does something remarkable because this is what he does. He steps into it. And he closed the book and gave it back to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Brothers and sisters, when we get back to our centers, when we get back to our churches, you will observe people are looking at you differently. I say when you get into that board meeting, when you get into that business meeting, when you step in, there will be something about your confidence. There will be something about your steps. When it's time for you to speak, everywhere will hush. They will look at you like you have something to deliver. Why? Because the man of God has written on you. He has written on you. He has written on you. 
Jesus sat there and looked at him. They were, they were fastened. He stepped into prophecy. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 from verse 1. The man of God showed us this scripture some, some years back and told us this is where we live. This is our place. Oh, hallelujah. Arise! He didn't say arise and shine. He said arise, shine. No space, no time. Don't say, don't say to yourself, yes, I've received the word, but, but I, need to, I need to think about it. I, I will start my partnership in January. I will start my partnership in, in February. Arise! Shine! Arise! Shine! Arise! Arise! He says, shine! Now, look at this, look at this. For your light is coming. For your light will come. For your light may come. For thy light is Thy light is come. Thy light is come. Pastor said, God is. Faith is. God is in the east. Faith is in the east. Brothers and sisters, I is. Thy light is come. He says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Wonderful truth, great truth, but we have something even better. The glory is inside. The glory is inside. Paul says, stir up the spirit. Stir up the gift of God. Stir up the gift of God. Now look at the next verse. Look at the, the consequences of this. For behold, darkness shall cover the, the earth. That means when you live here and you see darkness, don't be alarmed. Prophecy has shown us that there will be darkness. And the people will be in darkness. But the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory. His glory, His glory shall be seen upon thee. It will be seen in your bank account. It will be seen in your family. It will be seen in your business. It is seen in your church. Look at the next verse. And the Gentiles, the Gentiles shall come. I told you, favor is bringing nothing. Favor is bringing that thing. The Gentiles shall come to the light. Just a minute. The Lord told me some years ago, kings don't come to your sitting. Kings don't come to your thinking. Kings don't come to your wishing. Kings come to your rising. The kings don't come to raise you. You are too blessed. You are too blessed. When Jesus was born, a sign showed up and kings started moving. Brothers and sisters, kings are moving. Kings are moving. Kings come to your rising. Our rising is based on the word. Our rising is based on prophecy. We could go on and on. Final scripture. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Amplified version. Final scripture. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews 1 3. Listen, brothers and sisters. The New Year message is a prophecy. The New Year message is a prophecy. You have those segments on PCDL. Um, eight, part eight, day eight, is, is prophecy. When you listen to it, you just take it. You just enter. Verse three. 
Now, he is the sole expression of the glory of God. Jesus, the light being, the out reign of or radiance of the divine. He is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. And look at this. Upholding, maintaining, guiding, propelling the whole universe by his mighty prophecy of power. Prophecy is the spoken word of God. That means the word of God is a prophecy. Peter says we have a more sure word of prophecy. We have a more sure word of prophecy. That word is surer than your situation. It's surer than your circumstances. That word is more sure. I have a friend who is a pilot. He says before you fly, you have a flight plan. And you decide I'm taking off here. I'll go this way and I'll land this way. But no flight ever goes that same way. He says when you start out. There are some conditions that you don't know. But as the plane is going, the wind may blow the plane this way. But since the pilot has the flight plan, he can see it's going this way. The pilot will shift the plane back. As he's going, the wind may blow it this way. But the pilot... Brothers and sisters, we have a flight plan. We have a flight plan. We have a flight plan. What it means is this. When we live here with these words of prophecy that the man of God has declared, two months from now, if you feel your life is going this way, look at the flight plan. And you're moving. It's going this way. Baya Katabaya. Prophesy now. Prophesy now. Prophesy. Speak words. Speak words.